Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Garki Rawat. Let's get you our top story, which is veteran leader Malikarjun Kharge will formally take over as the Congress president today after he's handed over the certificate of election uh, by Sonia Gandhi at a function in Delhi, Garki. In fact, the Congress wants to make that uh, prep, the prep the function really big and hectic preparations have been underway at the Congress headquarters. Uh, this morning, Malikarjun Kharge, as you can see there, was at Raj Ghat. Now, he is the first non-Gandhi to head the Congress party in 24 years, he defeated Thiruvananthapuram MP Shashi Tharoor in a direct contest for the top post in the Grand Old Party after the Gandhis opted out of the race. Ahead of his taking over, Karge called on former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh at his residence and spent some time with him as well. This morning, like Gargi mentioned, he paid tribute to Mahatma Gandhi at Rajkar. He will also be visiting the memorials of former Prime Ministers, whether well as Jawaharlal Nehru, Lal Bahadur Shastri, Indra Gandhi as well as Rajiv Gandhi. Kargi. Well, let's go across to Sunil Prabhu now for more uh, on this. So, Sunil, a big day for the Congress today, uh, and uh, you know this will begin. Malik Arjun Kharge is, uh, you know, his his term as Congress president, and uh, a lot of expectations. That's right, uh, Gargi. The expectations are high, and he has his task cut off. Uh, there are immediate elections that are taking place, which are underway. Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh. Gujarat, the election commission. Uh, hopefully, we'll announce uh, the election dates in the next uh, two or three days, uh, if not by tomorrow. Uh, having said that, uh, if Mr. Karge will have to, uh, you know, uh, walk a tight rope here, uh, because one, what will be the role of the Gandhis? As you were mentioning, he's the first non-Gandhi in 24 years, uh, and he's also 80 years at age. Uh, the last Congress president was Mr. Sitaram Kesri, who was uh, removed uh, summarily after the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Congress party's poor performance uh, in that year, and East Sonia Gandhi uh, was made the Congress president, and subsequently she had an election in 2000 uh, where she won uh, from uh, Mr. Jitin Prasada. Uh, so having said that, uh, it is a long uh, row for him because what will be the role of the Gandhis in terms of the Congress Working Committee? There have been demands for elections in the Congress Working Committee at the CEC as well as at the Congress Parliamentary Board. Sonia Gandhi still continues to be the chairperson of the Congress Parliamentary Board, which gives us the power uh, to nominate uh, the leader of the opposition uh, in the uh, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha, uh, uh, you know, a power that she got uh, way back in 2004 when it had to be amended uh, after she decided uh, not to uh, contest and become the president, uh, become the prime minister of the country. So, uh, a huge and important role for Mr. Karge in terms of not only insur ensuring inner party democracy, improving the party's poll performance, which is already uh, lacking, and then, of course, uh, you know, fighting uh, various factions and ensuring uh, that there is a level playing field. So, uh, really, it is going to be difficult. It's going to be. Uh, it's not going to be easy. He has an enormous task, and as as we are all well aware, he's also 80 years of age. Uh, so, he's somebody who has been chosen by the Gandhis to contest as the Congress president, and uh, that has been widely accepted, uh, and we'll have to wait and see how things play out uh, from now onwards. That's right, and especially the relationship with the Gandhis, the kind of say they'll have. Sunil, also interestingly, Rahul Gandhi uh, will be uh, in Delhi for the first time since he uh, started the Bharat Jodo Yatra, isn't it? <clears throat> That's right, uh, Gargi. And in fact, uh, 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 both Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi have uh, wanted to show that they're backing Mr. Karge and that they uh, are not giving lip service. Uh, yes, as you saw, Sonia Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi uh, driving uh, down to Mr. Karge's house, uh, not wanting him, though he was keen himself to go and call on uh, Sonia Gandhi. He, uh, she said uh, that will not uh, send a right signal. And she personally drove down. Uh, despite uh, you know all the security that wasn't uh, 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 that is usually required for her, uh, she uh, you know uh, took that as a, a miss and and still went ahead and met Mr. Karge uh, at his residence and congratulated him along with Priyanka. Rahul Gandhi, of course, this will be a first opportunity for him uh, to meet uh, 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 Mr. Karge and congratulate him in person. And of course, they will make uh, those correct uh, uh, you know uh, uh, speeches today uh, to back him. Uh, to show uh, and send a message to all its political adversaries, be it the BJP and other political parties, one, that we have had democratically elected uh, uh, elections in the party, which is a good sign of inner party democracy. Second, most important, that we fully support him and we will work under him, under whatever decision has to be taken, basically uh, to send the theme 
uh, that you know the Congress is not a dynastic party. I think uh, that is something that they want to erase uh, because that has become a huge political point uh, by the BJP on a consistent basis by uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in every political campaign. And I think that is something that they are wanting to erase and show that the Congress is a democratically elected party and will back Mr. Karge to the hilt. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sunil, for getting us all those details. And uh, also, who was in the running initially was Ashok Gehlot. Let's just listen in to what he has to say about Malika Arjun taking charge. देखिए सोनिया गांधी जी ने जो कांग्रेस का नेतृत्व किया वो हमेशा याद किया जा रहा क्योंकि जब उनको अध्यक्ष बने थे वो तब भी हम सब ने रिक्वेस्ट की थी कि आप आगे आके पार्टी कमांड संभालें वरना पार्टी बिखर जाएगी उस वक्त में 98 में ये माहौल था और सबकी भावनाओं को देखते हुए सोनिया गांधी जी के सामने लैंग्वेज प्रॉब्लम थी तब भी उन्होंने कांग्रेस के इंटरेस्ट में किस रूप में उन्होंने स्वीकार भी किया चैलेंज को और उसके बाद में 22 साल तक वो कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष रहे और जिस प्रकार से सरकारें बनाई राज्यों में बारह तेरह राज्यों में सरकारें बनी थी सब और साथ में all right, so Ashok Gehlot, they're praising uh, Sonia Gandhi's uh, years as Congress president as today Malikarjun Kharge will take charge. Well, news from the UK now and the new UK Prime Minister Rishi Sonak started delivering on his work would begin immediate promise within an hour of his meeting uh, with uh, King Charles III. A string of members of Liz Truss's team of ministers were asked to step down as a precursor to the announcement of his new cabinet. His aim uh, to bring a different Tory factions together and project unity as well as stability. Now, two crucial appointments were made by the evening. That's uh, Dominic Raab as the Deputy Prime Minister and Jeremy Hunt as the Finance Minister. So far, four ministers have been asked to step down, Gargi. And he also included Swella Braverman as the Secretary of State for the Home Department. So that was a bit of a controversy and raised eyebrows. The hardline interior minister had quit just last week over a technical breach of government rules. Now, the UK is currently facing a huge economic slum that's rapidly progressing towards recession. And critics have accused the Conservative Party of failing to address the situation. So Rishi Sunak, as the new Prime Minister, has his task Morning, cut out. Are you confident this goes far enough? The sterling pound gained against the US dollar when Rishi Sunak was leading to become Prime Minister designate. And now that he has taken over as Prime Minister of Britain and has moved to number 10, the industry is feeling a sense of calm, a sense of stability, perhaps even a sense of reassurance that there is somebody there in number 10 who knows the economy and who possibly can bring out solutions at a time Britain's economy is ailing. But does Rishi Sunak have solutions up his sleeve to deal with the multiple challenges that face him? To discuss just that, I have with me some professionals of Indian origin. So it will be interesting to discuss with Mahesh Ayer, who is Chief Technology Officer at an important Hi. firm. Hi, Mahesh. Manu Krishnan, who is an asset management uh, uh, professional here in central London again. Also with me are professionals um, Market analyst Amit Agarwal, thank you for joining. Amit Taylor, yes. and you have a finance background. Yes. So let's start with you. Um, the the economy is is feeling a sense of reassurance. Is that true? And uh, yes, the way he is showing his uh, feeling that he's going to improve the economy. The, the way he is doing in the last uh, you know background what he does. Uh, he's, he's got an economic background and he's saying he's going to do that. Yes. So most likely we have believed that he's going to do that. But Liz Truss said that as well. Liz Truss, but he's got an uh, economic background so we can trust him as he's going to do something well. Okay, so Rishi's background seems to be the big USP for him to have made it and that's why the kind of expectations. As a market analyst, of course markets reacted very positively to the fact that he's now Prime Minister. Um, is that short-lived? How does the trend change now and does this mean that Rishi has to roll out those solutions sooner than later? Okay, so the initial reaction from the market was primarily based on his background, what he promises. He's supposed to be more market-friendly and fiscally prudent. Yeah. Now the question is, can he deliver? So that's where he has to 
sort of demonstrate that whatever the market is expecting, he's able to do. And he has a very challenging set of requirements. One, he has to balance inflation, but at the same time address the cost of living crisis that the country is facing and pull the economy out of recession. Very, very difficult. He's supposed to provide support to the low, to the lower income group, but also will the Tory, will the will his own party allow him to uh, put windfall taxes on yep. energy company or tax richer people? That's the only way he can balance the fiscal books, and that is his challenge. How does he balance the books? Clearly, we not we are not jealous uh, of uh, Rishi Sunak and for the job he has because he has more challenges than solutions. Um, Mahesh, this is the first person of Indian origin, and it feels like Britain has come a full circle. Does that affect you? What is your reaction? Did you feel a sense of pride, truly? I think uh, there is a little bit of pride, yes, that he is of Indian origin, but I don't think. Um, that really matters uh, because he's got a job to do and that has got nothing to do with your origins or your nationality. He's a British Prime Minister for all that matters and he has got to deliver on the promises he has made. And there's a lot of, uh, he's got his task cut out in front of him in terms of cutting inflation, yeah. uh, cutting taxes or raising taxes rather, which he might have to do which is not going to be very popular so I think is it uh, almost certain are we ready for some very difficult decisions as he want are we really ready I think no doubt about that no doubt. Yeah. as expected there's no other way than he has to bite the bullet we have to bite the bullet as well and expect the worst you know taxes are going to go up benefits are going to be cut so that's all that is expected in due course and if that happens he's not he's doing it for the good of the country end of the day right so we'll all have to be a part of that and support the decisions that they take and play go along with the game okay um, from technology point of view, different industries have, have had various challenges during the pandemic. Um, from technology point of view, what are the things that Rishi should be doing to, to help Britain at a time when even India has taken over Britain uh, as becoming the fifth largest economy in the world? I think uh, the last few years, uh, Britain has seen a huge uh, technology skill shortage. And because of that, uh, salaries have risen very sharply and uh, we have a huge shortage also because of i think brexit because uh, this due to all these immigration uh, rules uh, i think he has to do something on that side whereby he uh, you know promotes uh, easier visa arrangements for indians for yeah. other nationalities so the immigration thing is going to be a big thing yeah. for him to uh, try and sort out this technical skill shortage and we must mention that India is at the moment in talks with Britain to sign a free trade agreement and immigration has been a big um, discussion point or a debate point between the two nations. Um, Manu, all of these, all this market reaction, positive uh, reactions, is that short-lived? Also is Rishi Sunak's term short-lived because he doesn't have much time, he hasn't won a full term. There is pressure for a general election, should there be a general election? See, it's a very difficult question to answer, but let me put it this way. Rishi has become Prime Minister and this was his best chance to become Prime Minister because I'm very sorry to use this term, but none of the white boys wanted to be Prime Minister at this stage because they don't want to be you know, pushed under a bus. So Rishi took the bait, he has become PM and these boys are going to push him under the train. I know it could be a year, it could be maximum two years when the next general election is. But in my think, I think it will be less than two years where we will have a general election for no fault of Rishi's, all said and done. But that's my personal opinion. Welcome back. Delhi's air pollution improved uh, this uh, morning. And uh, reasons are behind it is the wind speed that's been favorable, but it still remained uh, poor. The air quality index uh, that stood at 262 this morning, improving from over 300 points on a Tuesday, the day after Diwali. It was 312 as far as the day of Diwali is concerned. And the neighboring cities of Ghaziabad, Noida, Greater Noida, Gurugram and Faridabad have also reported air quality between moderate to poor Gargi. That's right, Delhi's particulate matter. Uh, 2.5 pollution levels today morning were three to four times above the national standard of 60 microgram per cubic meter. The capital recorded very poor air quality on Tuesday after residents in many parts of the capital also burst crackers. But it was the lowest pollution levels post Diwali in seven years. Uh, NDTV's Vedan sent us this report on the pollution situation this morning.
Well, Delhi's air quality index AQI continues to be in the poor category. I remember, in a sense, it has improved uh, from the very poor category that it had slipped into immediately after Diwali. Remember, during the Diwali day and immediately after Diwali, Delhi's air quality index had worsened. Uh, from the poor category to the very poor category. What was also particularly concerning that the PM 2.5 pollutant, the lethal variant, that is, you know, the micro pollutant that penetrates into the lungs and causes various respiratory ailments, that had increased to concerning levels. And the PM 2.5 was 180 times uh, the WHO safe limit, hourly say, uh, you know, uh, uh, daily safe limit of 15, and that was particularly concerning. The PM 2.5 levels. Uh, continue to be high even today, uh, much higher than WHO's safe limit. However, as per the Central Policing Control Board data, both Delhi's air quality index as well as the PM 2.5 levels are uh, lower, considerably lower than uh, what they were in uh, during and post Diwali in the past five years. So, why is it that these levels, these uh, you know Delhi's air pollution and these levels, which are markers for Delhi's air pollution? were lower as compared to the value and post value in the past last five in the past five years well it cannot be attributed to any uh, you know action taken by the delhi government because it's particularly as experts point out because of meteorological conditions and weather conditions that air pollution was lower uh, during diwali this year so there are three main factors one is of course the fact that diwali was you know uh, diwali was early this year so we saw that um, you know there was considerable heat which uh, caused the pollution which caused the pollutants to stay at uh, you know at, at uh, lower levels the other uh, uh, important factor as experts point out is that the, the, the direction of the wind changed from uh, northwest to southeast and this is uh, what caused uh, the stubble burning and the pollutants uh, that uh, that uh, that come with stubble burning uh, to not enter delhi and the third major uh, factor uh, was the fact that uh, uh, the, the cyclone, the cyclonic system that developed over the Bay of Bengal, that also caused air pollution in Delhi to remain at considerably lower level as compared to the past five years. But still, remember the PM 2.5 was 180 times WHO's safe limit. So Delhi's air pollution only relatively was lower. I remember yesterday the Ahmadi Party government uh, flagged off 150 smog guns. However, as we've been reporting through the uh, course of Diwali and before that as well, Delhi's, uh, you know, uh, Delhi government's 15-point winter action plan uh, does not have any strong uh, measures as far as vehicular pollution is concerned. And vehicular pollution contributes almost 80% uh, to Delhi's air pollution. So as many experts point out, only knee-jerk measures were taken by the Ahmadi Party government and long-term measures to address vehicular pollution and industrial pollution are not in place. That is why Delhi's air quality index slipped to very the very poor category and still continues to be poor and the PM 2.5, the lethal variant, continues to be high even today. Down there reporting from the national capital, Gargi. So basically the wind direction, the wind speed, that's what got the pollutants out of Delhi. And like he was pointing out, it hasn't gotten that cold. Usually the day after the valley is very, very cold. And that change and that dip in temperature, right. which didn't happen, which is why we're seeing that so the pollution... we're very lucky actually yeah. to have, you know, less pollution uh, post Diwali this year around. But Chennai had very high pollution. And with crackers being burst, the air quality index in uh, the air quality index in Chennai slipped to the very poor category after Diwali with the Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board even recording AQI readings between 345 and 786 uh, on October 25th. And while crackers have caused pollution, uh, not just in Chennai, but also the national capital, there's also safety hazards sometimes, like one poor family had their house burned down. Kargi. That's right, the rocket actually entered their home on Diwali and uh, their house burned down and ETV's Priyanshi spoke to the family. Well, most people were celebrating Diwali at their homes with their families. A family in Delhi's Dwarka has completely lost their entire home because of a rocket. Uh, Ma'am, aap hame bata sakti hain ki kya hua, aap, aap apna naam bata dijiye aur kya hua Diwali ki raat. Ji, mera naam Vandana hai aur Diwali jaise sabke liye hoti hai, aise mere liye bhi Diwali bahut important festival hai kyunki 
मैं हर साल बहुत अच्छे से दिवाली मनाती हूँ कल भी मैं वैसे ही उत्साहित थी दिवाली मनाने के लिए मैंने अपने घर को रंगोली से सजाया था फूलों से मंदिर सजाया था मैंने तेरह साल मेरी शादी को हो गए एक चीज़ मैंने बड़े प्यार से बड़े सोच विचार से अपनी एक एक गृहस्थी की चीज़ मैंने बनाई थी आज आपके सामने वो मलबे के रूप में तब्दील हो चुकी है ये इतने कट्टे मलबा नहीं है एक्चुअली ये मेरी गृहस्थी है जिसमें मेरे बेटे का टेबल है ये मेरे बेटे का टेबल है उधर मेरा बेटा कंप्यूटर रख के अपना पढ़ाई करते थे उनका पियानो है इसी में ही ये मैंने सोचा नहीं था कि दिवाली के दिन मुझे ये देखना पड़ेगा शायद जब भी दिवाली आए या मुझे नहीं लगता आगे कुछ सालों तक ये दिन मैं भूल पाऊंगी मेरे लिए बड़ा शॉकिंग दिन था ये हमने शादी के एक साल बाद पैसे जोड़ के दोनों ने मिलके लिया था आज इसमें कुछ नहीं बचा है आप देख सकते हैं एसी इन्वर्टर फ्रिज टीवी लैपटॉप सब कुछ जल गया कुछ नहीं बचा यहाँ तक कि दीवारें दिखाए दीवारों की ईंटें दिखने लगी इतना ज़्यादा आग थी ये ईश्वर की कृपा रही कि पड़ोस में सब लोग बच गए लोग और सरकार सरकार इस चीज़ को सीरियसली ले कि जो भी इतने कंजस्टेड मतलब जितने पास पास वाले एरिया हैं उन पर उनमें बिल्कुल बुरी पूरी तरह से चीज़ें बैन होनी चाहिए वहाँ पर पटाखे क्यों और दूसरा लोगों से कहना चाहूँगी कि प्लीज़ आप ये खुद ही समझिए कि इतने पास पास घर हैं एक फुल जड़ी भी पूरे घरों को जला सकती है तो रॉकेट तो बहुत दूसरी चीज़ें हैं Welcome back a private hospital in Uttar Pradesh where a dengue patient died allegedly after he was transfused fruit juice instead of a blood platelets faces a bulldozer threat now a demolition notice has been served to the global hospital and trauma center in Prayagraj for unauthorized construction the hospital was built without permission we now learn and it must be vacated by friday is what the notice says the hospital was sealed last week and there are no patients there let's go across to alok pande now for more alok this was quite a shocking claim that was made by the you know the relatives claiming that mosambi juice was uh, transfused to the patient but now the hospital also facing uh, this notice a demolition notice and we learned that it was uh, illegal Uh, well yes and it follows the same uh, textbook that's been implemented in the past when uh, bulldozers have been in action in uttar pradesh and uh, these are anyway uh, contest contentious things that are happening so for instance in this one uh, the notice is dated the 19th of october but it was pasted yesterday and it says that you know uh, this illegality was found last year itself and that the hospital was given three uh, three chances to come and present their side but they did not and that is why they are now being asked to vacate by friday so that uh, more, more action can take place one would assume that that more action would mean uh, bulldozers because this is a demolition notice uh the hospital has so far not reacted to this like you said it was sealed uh, on the day these allegations were made and after that it's not been unsealed since uh interestingly a medical report on that uh, disputed platelet bag that the relatives of the deceased dengue patient claimed uh, were was the uh, Uh, chemical juice uh, sorry chemical plus sweet lime juice uh, is not made public has not been made public by the prayagraj administration however uh, 10 people were arrested the next day after the uh, incident by the prayagraj police and the police said that these people were running a fake platelet gang uh, the police said that these people were passing on blood plasma another component of blood as platelets which are used to treat dengue as we know and that was the racket that was running and they said that so far at that point of time few days ago they had said that we have found no evidence that possibly juice was being used but that medical report also important it's not yet uh, made public and yet a notice like this has been served on the hospital so one wait to see how this pans out right uh, thanks so much alok for joining us with all those details News now from Assam and two days after a Mia museum was inaugurated in the Gwalpara district to commemorate Bengali origin Muslims of the state the Hemant Biswa Sarma government has ordered it sealed on Tuesday after protest by BJP leaders among others now the state government sealed the museum saying the building is a Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana house and was not allocated to be used as a museum and uh, more information on uh, those connected with the museum now uh, being investigated in fact they were already under investigation uh, Assam Chief Minister Hemant Biswa Sarma has also raised questions on the funding of the so-called muse- museum and also on whether the artifact showcase belonged to a Bengali Muslim community or not. Now look at the ball again. 
সেইটো হল নাম্বার ওয়ান পার্ট নাম্বার টু পার্ট এইবিল করবেন কত টাকা পয়সা পাব সেই হল দ্বিতীয় পার্ট সেই পুলিশে অনুসন্ধান করি লুঙিত বাদ দিয়ে আন তো অরিজিনেল কোন বস্তু এই তো আমার এক্সপার্ট কমিটির আগে প্রুফ করব ঘরতে মানে যেহেতু ঘর গভর্নমেন্ট এলাউড দিব এটা হাজার হাজার লাখ লাখ মানুষে মানে এই ভাড়াও দিব কিছু মানে ভাড়াও দিছে কোন হ্যাঁ গতি মোক বিপিএল আন্ডার বিপিএল থাকার কারণে মানে বিপিএল থাকার কারণে যেটা মোক ঘর পুতিছে সরকারে এই অন্যায় করেছে আমি নিশ্চয় ইয়ার কিনা আমার মুখ্যমন্ত্রীর প্রতি মোট আহ্বান মুখ্যমন্ত্রী নিশ্চয় এই সন্দর্ভত মানে অতি সালে খুলে দিয়ে ব্যবস্থা করে This controversy around the museum which has been privately set up in Gwalpara district's Lakhipur uh, is not only uh, 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 you know, uh, controversial but it is interesting uh, as well. In fact, this uh, entire story has developed in the past three days. On Sunday, uh, uh, you know, few members of the uh, Mia Parishad, uh, they came together to uh, start a museum, a uh, privately owned museum uh, uh, at uh, Lakhipur in Gwalpara district. Now, uh, what they claimed is that this museum actually uh, documents the culture and tradition of of the Bengali, uh, 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 you know, Muslims of lower Assam of Bengali origin uh, who are often uh, in Assam branded as illegal immigrants from uh, Bangladesh and often referred uh, to as Mias. Now Mia uh, at times this word is also used in a uh, parogative uh, sense in Assam and uh, the, these people who uh, you know started this museum uh, from the Mia Parishad, uh, they called it uh, as a Mia museum. And after that, uh, there have been uh, demands by uh, BJP leaders, including some of the MLAs, that this has to be, uh, you know, uh, taken off. And uh, yesterday, in fact, while interacting with media, uh, Chief Minister Himanta Bishwa Sharma also said that they uh, would ask the police to investigate uh, into the uh, funding, uh, who is funding this uh, kind of museum. And also he questioned uh, on the artif uh, artifacts that have been kept in the museum on whether uh, they be uh, actually belong to the uh, Bengali uh, Muslim community or not. Now, uh, this community, remember, uh, makes about 30% of the total Muslim pop, uh, population. In fact, it, it, it kind of makes about 30% of the total population of Assam and therefore uh, have been an, a very important political fodder. But the twist in the story came after, uh, you know, after uh, in the evening when first the district authorities went and sealed uh, the house in which this museum was housed, uh, claiming that this house actually is a uh, prime minister uh, uh, you know housing scheme house and uh, given uh, to uh, the poor people for residential purpose and not to start a uh, you know museum or anything and therefore it has been sealed and later in the evening three people uh, who uh, are linked with the organization uh, uh, which uh, you know founded this um, uh, museum uh, including the main curator uh, they were detained uh, interestingly in connection to a terror module case. Now, earlier this month, a terror module was busted in Lower Assam and uh, in connection to a case in Nolbari district uh, uh, to, uh, you know, a terror module backed by the Al-Qaeda in subcontinent and the Ansarul Bangla team, which is a banned terror organization from Bangladesh. Uh, in that connection, these three people uh, have, have been detained. Now, what will be interesting to see is that how actually police establishes whether uh, there is some sort of uh, you know, terror funding link to the, uh, you know, the, the, the Mia Museum. Now, Mia Museum itself uh, uh, is a controversial issue in Assam because remember in 2020, uh, when a, a former Congress uh, uh, MLA, he actually wrote to the state government asking to set up a Mia Museum at the Sankardev Kalashetra, which is the main, uh, you know, uh, museum uh, depicting the uh, culture and traditions of different Assamese community. And that created a lot of, uh, you know, uh, that created a lot of uh, controversy. And before that, in 2019, uh, there was a police case registered against 10 people who uh, wrote uh, uh, Mia poetry, uh, uh, poetries in, in, in the uh, dialect used by the Bengali Muslim communities of Lower Assam particularly. And that also created a lot of controversy. So uh, this has has, uh, this issue, uh, you know, has uh, been in controversy, and now this is the fresh one where, uh, in a very interesting way, that the, uh, that the police not only sealed uh, the, you know, that uh, building uh, where uh, the museum was housed, but also three people related to uh, the mu museum have been detained in a terror module uh, case. They have been, they are being in investigated, and this also includes uh, uh, one person who is a member of the Aam Admi Party as well. 
News from UP where a teenager was found unconscious and covered in blood in a Kanoj hours after she had left her home on Sunday. The police have registered a case of rape on a complaint by her family. But what has really emerged and has been shocking is how her people gawked at the poor girl who was lying there on the ground. It's a horrific and disturbing story that's emerging through a series of videos. Alok Pandey reports. <laughs> A 13-year-old girl mysteriously showed up, seriously wounded and bleeding near a government guest house in Uttar Pradesh's Kannauj on Sunday. The police have registered a rape case, though a medical report is still not in. But the disturbing story is emerging through a series of videos. The worst of these clips shows the girl writhing in pain, apparently reaching out for help with her blood-soaked arms. As a group of men stand around her, filming her on phones. In the 25-second video, voices discuss whether the police have been alerted, but there is no attempt to help the girl. A second video, which also went viral, showed a policeman running to an auto rickshaw with the injured girl in his arms. Two CCTV cameras in the vicinity caught the girl walking with the man. The teen left home to exchange a piggy bank on Sunday afternoon and did not return for five hours, her uncle has said in an FIR. He allegedly took her to the guest house. With Mohammed Israel in Kannauj, this is Alok Pandey, NDTV.